just got to the new spot and anchored. It looks pretty nice here. Yeah? Oh, that is nice. I'm super happy we dropped that thing the first time. We weren't even really worried. Welcome to Sailing Lady Africa. I'm Ricky and this is my wife Simone. After two years of hard work on our boat, she's finally ready to take us from South Africa across the Atlantic to the Bahamas. Be sure to join in our adventures by subscribing down below. It's so early in the morning today, I think it's like 6 o'clock. We're going to head up and move before the wind picks up. We want to move to the next bay, um, two bays over I think. Called, it's called Secret Harbor. So we want to move there just to get another scenery and a different view. Different boats and stuff. So we're going to go there. The water's super clear so it'd be good to make water there. He's just um, chucking away the trash and then we're going to move. Before leaving, we had to do some preparation. Unhook the mooring ball, get Navionics on Ricky's phone running, hoist up our dinghy and switch on all our electronics, as well as close all the hatches. It was a quick motor to the next bay, but we had to make sure we avoided any possible reefs. We had found a pretty sweet spot, so it was time to drop anchor. Just got to the new spot and anchored. It looks pretty nice here, yeah? but um, I don't really trust this anchorage. And I'm, I'm always the one guy that's like suspicious to... If everyone's anchored everywhere in one area, they like kind of not anchored and there was a spot available between these two boats. I might kind of just go check out what's happening. So give a dive, make sure that the anchor looks good and the area where we're on is pretty solid. There we're good. Pretty sweet spot. That's the marina there, so we can go to the docks there and take a little road that goes up the hill and catch the taxi there. And uh, the bay's pretty full. Mangroves out to this side. Oh, we're right by the airport. Like a twin otter or something. I oh, know that's an islander. Ricky dove our anchor to make sure the holding was okay and noticed little barnacles growing on the hull. So it was time for a little TLC for Lady Africa. Don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't already and click on the notification bell to alert you when we upload a new episode and like this video as well as share it with your friends and family. It's a free way you can support our channel. It's crazy how much boat growth you accumulate in the tropics in such a short period of time. Once the hulls were clean and Ricky was all showered, it was time to explore our new anchorage. Ricky's 
like obsessed with the mangroves. He always just wants to go drive the Niggy straight into the mangroves. I know. <laughs> Green turtle. That's really cute. Green turtle. Lady A. So we're taking a walk around here to see where we catch the bus. I have no idea where we're going. I said it there, so. They said it was close. This looks like we're shaking our we found ourselves walking over to the next bay. Ooh, that is nice. So walking back to the anchorage, we literally walked to the next spot that we want to go anchor at. I don't think we took the right road to get to the shopping. Buttons. Yeah, we didn't know where the bus stop is, but we'll have to ask. Maybe someone knows where it is. We'll just choose the map. <laughs> that too. But it's cool to see the next bay. Probably in the next two weeks we anchor at the next bay. Yeah. We keep on doing that until we've seen all the bays. Then we're done with Grenada and then we go up to Carriacou. Carriacou and Petit Martinique. The following evening we ended up taking a dinghy ride back to our old anchorage for the full moon party that occurs once a month. We came to the midnight the full moon party. There are so many dinghies now, we have to go dinghy hopping. Cars are going down. That's full, eh? The next day was like Christmas for Lady Africa. We opted to buy a new anchor to give ourselves a peace of mind knowing our boat will be more secure. That's a big stick. It's a new big stick. Jeez, that anchor is huge. Send it. Send it. Five meters to the bottom. You're gonna do it nicely now. Now we can sleep and forget about it. Hopefully. Thank you. First time set. I'm happy with that. You can sleep no matter what the wind. The mantis appears to be bigger than the other ones for the same weight. But I'm super happy we dropped that thing the first time. We weren't even really worried back down. 1500 RPM and she just held. We never had that with the Delta. No, so, <laughs> it was, it was it pick was, up, was drop, pick up, drop. Spot, we dropped the, the Delta. Now we don't need to be freaking scoping out five, six to one every single time. Happy Merry Christmas, honey. It's your birthday present from me to you. Yeah, birthday and Christmas present. It's actually, anchor. Sleep well. it's the boat's Christmas present. <laughs> So we just got done changing our anchor. We had the Lumar Delta and we changed it to a Mantis M1, I think it's called. It's just a peace of mind with the Delta. We just, you always had to put so much scope out to it for it to hold. Peace of mind to sleep at night. So Ricky hasn't been really sleeping well with the anchor that we had. When we were anchoring in Ascension and Fernando, it was always, the, the anchor was a pain. Everyone else who had like a rock now, mantis, they dropped the anchor and it holds so well. But for us, we always had to put such a large scope out for it to hold. It's peace of mind to be able to sleep at night knowing that we won't be dragging. Be happy and stoked. It's tested out so far so good. I mean, we dropped it and the thing held one go. We were opposed to with the Delta, we dropped it and then it didn't hold and then we had to lift it up, drop it again. So it's a longer process anchoring with the Delta than it is with a... Um, rock knot or mantis. Yeah, we're super happy with the mantis so far. The reviews are really good. 
Everyone's raving about mantas, so that's why we went for the mantas. Paul, they said that they'll sell our delta for us at the shop, so we get some money back for that. Yeah, man, boats are always upgrading, or upgrading something, or you're unhappy with one thing and you got to change it. And but so you learn, and I guess it's it's a learning curve, and maybe the next boat we own, you know, there wouldn't be there won't be so many little things that we still like unsure of like I'll, we'll know exactly what we want and what we don't want and what works and what doesn't work Ricky's coming back Fun. let's go diving look at these storms they awaits us perfect storm let's go diving once we were all settled it was time to explore the ocean life around the bay Slamming on those brakes. Ricky keeps doing this, and then I have to stay up because we're gonna tip over if I go look too. Up the fish finder. The visibility was great and the temperature was perfect, although with it being overcast, you did get chilly pretty quickly. Our Canadian friends Marty and Michelle came to join us. How's it going? No, we're just checking the area out. This is probably the best thing we've done. See you there! Ricky was on the hunt for some lionfish. Lionfish are like the cockroach of the sea. Their populations continue to expand and threaten the well-being of coral reefs and other marine ecosystems. Researchers have discovered that a single lionfish residing on a coral reef can reduce recruitment of native reef fish by 79%. As the lionfish population grow, they put additional stress on coral reefs. For example, a lionfish eats herbivores and herbivores eat algae from coral reefs. Without herbivores, algae growth goes unchecked, which can be detrimental to the health of coral reefs. It's getting cold because of the rain and uh, temperatures dropped. I'm frizzing. I'm frizzing. So I'm not swimming right now. But Ricky and them are searching for some lionfish. And there are so many lionfish. It's crazy how much lionfish is actually here uh, compared to any other fish. So 
We're gonna prepare some lionfish. It's gonna be our first time, but we're excited to try it out. So I bought these new masks. Um, it's a crazy, it's a small profile, free diving, scuba diving mask. But it has this type of lens to it. So it's really great if it's like a bright sunshine day, but when it's dark, oh, you can't see anything on it. So I was really struggling to see anything now as the sun was setting. He was like showing me, oh, there's lobster, there's this, and I couldn't see it. So I can only dive, evidently I can only dive with this when it's day time and bright. Um, if it's overcast, I've got to switch over to my scuba diving one. So lobster season's closed, so we couldn't grab any lobster. He found a huge one. I had to go for it. But yeah, you can't take them because the season's over. So we'll just have to wait till it's open again and then we'll go on a lobster hunt. I'm just going to plug one or two of them when you pick up the gear. Shut this way. We headed back to Lady Africa to prepare the lionfish. Lionfish are not really fished because of the reason that they're venomous. But if you know how to prepare them and are careful, they're extra delicious. You just have to make sure that you cut off the venomous spines and fins. We just watched a YouTube video on how to do it. It was pretty basic and simple. Don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't already and give this video a big thumbs up. And if you'd like to join our Patreon family, you can do so by clicking on any of the links in the description below. When you join, you get access to our WhatsApp group, behind the scenes footage, you get to watch our episodes earlier as well. So check that out if you haven't already. Our online store has been set up. I'll put the link in the description below too so that you guys can go check it out. Have a good day and see you guys next week. Toodaloo.